Hi, this is Agent Zero, the Agent Zero. Thank you for listening to Crown Ref's podcast, Serve the Game. Thank you for listening to the Crown Ref's podcast, the audio experience for basketball officials. Serve the game. With beating Gilbert Arenas, right now, refereeing. I really don't understand why they feel the need to call technical. It's a one-sided thing. If something happens to me on the court and I get frustrated, I yell at you. You get frustrated and give me a tech. You miss the call, so that's strike one on you. It's too much power for no reason. Welcome back to the Crown Refs Podcast, the audio experience for basketball officials. I'm excited to welcome in the 2003 NBA's most improved player, who morphed into a prolific scorer and offensive player in the mid-2000s, averaging over 28-6 and six in back-to-back seasons, including a 60-piece against Kobe and the Lakers. This man was named to three NBA All-Star teams with the Washington Wizards, playing for a total of four teams in his 12-year NBA career. You can find him now as the host of the popular show, the No Chill Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Agent Zero, Mr. Gilbert Arenas. How you doing, sir? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Appreciate your time. Appreciate you coming on. Just wanted to lay out a little context of how we connected. Uh, Last week, a referee friend of mine sent me a YouTube clip titled, What's Eating Gilbert Arenas? And I got concerned. I got concerned because I don't want to let anything eat at you. The video was already eaten at my friend. So I said, don't worry, Jay, I'll talk to him. So I watched the video for about 17 seconds, not because it was eaten at me or I didn't like it. It was just because I was so eager to reach out to you to help alleviate some of your frustrations with officials. Because I'm trying to bridge the gap, the communication gap that exists between coaches and officials, players and officials. So I thank you again for responding to my message and agreeing to have this discussion with me today. No problem, no problem. So before we get into what's eating Gilbert Arenas, I just want to ask you this question. Referees have to have that next play mentality and quickly move on from their mistakes or it's going to create new ones in the game. So as a player, and you were a great one, would you say that it's a productive allocation of time and energy to spend complaining or arguing calls that have already happened in the game? Please tell me the benefits of that and how it helps your team. Okay, there's no benefit. Like there's no no scenario where a referee makes a call and we yell and then they just like overturn it. Like that's never happened. Like I, I fouled you. And I'm yelling that I didn't foul. And he's like, okay, I hear you. No foul, keep playing. It's never happened. So there's no benefit of, of, of doing it. I'm just going to be honest. There's no benefit of doing it. We just do it. Because I know the game is super intense and uh, frustration, so much on the line. You know, everybody, everybody's um, so invested in this, coaches and players. So... I get at the apex moments of the game, it could be very frustrating to not get what you want. You know, that's what's that we're we're in the we're in the moment. You know, um, you know we're <laughs> it's it's ten players. You know, in the in the in real time in the moment. So you know, we never foul, and we always get fouled. You know, that's <laughs> our mentality. I know in in your clip you were saying you should have like 24 seconds to vent after a call. Something like so, some (laughs) random number. That's pretty funny. Uh, Now you were talking about uh, how how trash talking in the game has nothing to do with officials. Just just go on a little bit of that and and what else is, you know, kind of eating you about about officiating. Like like if you see like football, right, or any sport, trash talking is – part of it that's what we grew up on that's what we do that's you know that's some guys advantages that's their tool so you know I don't think they give out penalties in football when players are trash talking you know but in basketball when two players are going at or whatever you know same thing with the fans it's part of the the atmosphere and then sometimes refs just come in and just start teching people and it's like Oh, why are you even? Why are you even listening over here? Let us let us do what we do. This is how we're trying to gauge. Like, this is I'm trying to see if he's mentally weak minded. Like, why are you interrupting this 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 conversation right now? And and that's that's irritating. 
Yeah, I know in, in football, probably a little bit easier to get away with it with the face mask, more players on the field. But you're right. We don't, they do let them go at it a little bit more. And, and I think for, I think in the NBA, you do, you do see trash talk that's allowed. And a lot of times the refs just steps in. They probably step in and deliver a technical foul when it becomes in a taunting like manner. That's the game. Me hitting three shots and shooting arrows and what Steph Curry does, that, that is taunting. <laughs> it's all part of taunting. So you can't take the, the verbal part of the taunting out, but you allow the other extra stuff because the other extra stuff is more visual for the public to see. So that actually looks worse when you think about it. Like when Russell Westbrook starts doing the baby carriage and start doing a he's too little, that is more embarrassing than mm -hmm. me just saying that oh, you're just a little boy. You little like you know what I mean. So you know to get the tech on the verbal part, but not the actual visual part is, you know, like ah, come on. Because then it becomes a, a visual demonstration where everybody in the gym can see. And <laughs> the bow and hour was very fun. Remember back in the nineties, <laughs> Reggie Miller with slit in the throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like we're getting like th those are not texts, but if I say the word near the ref, he's gonna. Take me for it, and it's like. It's well, they got the slitting, slitting of the throat out, and that was really one of the first, you know, vi visual demonstrations of taunting. Now, like you mentioned, rocking the baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, it's funny. I love it, <laughs> yeah, but it that's... is taunting and and demeaning. What about like <laughs> when you put your hand down after a dunk, like he's a little man? Tell me about yeah, this new one. Man, yeah. Tell me about this new one. Scratching of the head. Huh. The, did you see the new one? The, yeah, could you explain what that is? The scratching of the head? Oh, that's the... Uh, oh, I don't know the scratching out of this one. You know, that's I dunked on your head. I, I you know, okay. I, I dunked on you. So that's what the kids are doing now. Like, I dunked on your head. That's on your head. So, you know, now you have the whole arena doing it. So and that's what I said. That's more embarrassing. That's more, that's, that's more embarrassing <laughs> than, like, the stare over and I dunked on you. Like, why are we getting texts for this stuff? Like, now, I know as a former player myself, trash talking can be fun, and we would like it to be part of the game. And it is at the Rucker. It is at Dykeman. It is at the Drew League. But it's written in the NBA manual and in the NCAA and NFHS rules that when a player taunts an opponent, a technical foul is immediately accessed. So it's actually not part of the game. So you can't get mad if an official is enforcing the rules because in the NBA, the referees actually get fined if they don't enforce the rules. Really? Like like really come on like let's like there's rules that like like if it doesn't impact the game wh why are you penalizing in it if it doesn't slow the game out if it's not we're sitting here like even if me and he, me and this person is sitting here jabbing and four players are going that's two players that's not in the game like if that's what they want to do let them do what they're going to do if it gets to a certain level like, okay, they might start throwing blows, then that's when you should step in. But just a regular trash talk and I dunked on you and I'm staring the player down. What is the point of stopping that 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 play right there, stopping the momentum, calling a tech, giving this player a tech, they got to take the ball out. Like, it, it just it just slows up the flow when there, there's no need. There's no need for it. It's interesting uh, on plays where we have a stare down. Us as referees have to kind of differentiate between just looking because you're allowed to look at someone mm -hmm. versus when it uh, transfers over to actually now I'm taunting you because probably the duration of it, you know, goes a little bit longer and now it goes into taunting. Yeah, but taunting, like me hitting six shots on you is taunting. Me calling one four flat is taunt. Like four flat is taunt. Like, you hitting six shots is you getting buckets. That's part of taunting. It's all taunting. The whole game is taunting. When players like you, you're sitting there trash talking and you say, look at the score, that's taunting. You know, it's, you know, that's, that's all part of taunting. Somebody's at a free throw line and then I'm just going to stare at them the whole time to try to intimidate them. That's taunting. That is all the, that's what I said, it all falls under the same umbrella. And that's why I said, you know, like sometimes like just, just knowing the nature of, sports and knowing the nature of players that's when you say i'm not even going to waste my time you know like calling these little calls because it's like it's 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 nitpicking at that point 
Also, as a player, though, once you start talking, you're taking away focus of that next play mentality that we talked about. And also, um, trash talking falls under the guidelines of respect for the game. So once it become, becomes the get too much, then it becomes less about the actual game and more about that individual just boasting. Like, like okay, so like, let's take Gary Payton, right? One of the best trash talkers in the game. That was part of his defense. So like, like that was part of his defense, Sam Cassell. That's part, you know, um, let's see, uh, Patrick Beverly, like Kobe Jordan. That's, that's depending on who you are, that's Embiid, um, KG. That's, that's their MO. Who did KG have his problems with? Cause he, uh, uh, was it no, no, um, I'm not sure. He had problems with Kim Noah. Kim Noah. Um, Bulls. Joe Kim. Here. Joe Kim Noah. Joe Kim. Yeah. Yeah. Trash talkers. Like, like, there's, there's, like, there's games within the game, and trash talking is part of that game within the game. So that's why I said it's like one of those things where you just don't just, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it is what it is. That's why I said it's like so getting, getting like. Like it kind of it kind of hurts the game because the trash talking is the trash talking is not going to stop. That's just what we do. Um, but it hurts the game because now you're 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 making it less aggressive because now I got one tech for something so simple. Now any anything that I do that that causes a reaction, I'm out of the game for it. I hang on the rim too long, I'm out of the game for it. Like I don't even know why that's in the same category as an aggressive something like you know if i'm cussing out the refs i get a tech why is dunking and hanging on the rim all under that same category that shouldn't be allowed be allowed how many techs do you want and how many different categories should we lump them in like i don't know if that should be a tech a personal technical like that counts as a personal like like think about it i'm i'm yelling at you right and you give me a tech and then i go and dunk and then hang on and then boom i'm out of the game like wait what that what like that's, like that's, yep. uh, yeah, like that's not that's not that's not the same thing but that's why you as a player with a high basketball iq and if you've already received one technical foul you're gonna know better than to not hang on the rim at that point but it's part of the game it's like it's oh, it's like a rim people. though it's not a chin-up bar but as I'm saying, some people will dunk or two hand dunk and hang on it, drop. Like it depends on what the ref is deciding to do. Like if if he's already still mad at you, that little two seconds, that's a tech. Oh, but the refs don't get mad at players. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. As long as it's a human, the humans kind of get mad. Well, no no players can get me mad. I hope you take my word for that. They used to get me mad, but so many times of being bashed and, uh, you know, having to deal with their emotions, it, it, it gives you real thick skin. You know, I've been doing this a decade now, so I wouldn't change, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, having to go through kind of those emotional hardships, mm -hmm. it definitely raises your emotional capacity. Let's talk about hanging on the rim real quick. Let me just read you the rule. An offensive player who deliberately hangs, swings, or uses his own basket, ring, net, backboard or support to gain height other than to prevent injury to himself or an opponent shall be assessed, shall be assessed a non unsportsmanlike technical foul. Um, so that, that would be one opportunity for them to hang on the rim, you know, to prevent injury or if a player is underneath them. So you can hang on those extra few seconds. It's just when you're lifting up, you know, the pull-up dunk hanging on the rim is an easy one. But why, can, why should that be thrown as a team tech? Like a you know just like a you know delay of game. Why doesn't that fall under that category? Like two delay of games is just it counts as a team tech, not a personal tech. That should be under the same category instead of a personal. Because you know you only get two personals, and you got all these extra things that falls under just two personals. Mm -hmm. and you're sitting there like ah, I, I can do without this hanging on the rim one. That throw that throw that as part of the team. Shit. Let the team deal with that. <laughs> I want to hear a little bit more about some of those trash talking legends that you mentioned. Um, any good stories you have of some great, great trash talking from Gary Payton, Jordan, and 
people like that? Like, you know, like with Gary, um, he was a nice trash talker, but, you know, he can get, like, real rude, <laughs> right? Um, I remember it was my rookie season, and, um, like, I'm on the court, <laughs> dribbling, they just scored, dribbling the ball down the court, and he just gets into that defensive stance, the glove, I, fr I freaked out, right? Like, oh, shit, it's the glove, right? I just, I watched it, I watched it growing up, and I know what the glove does. So I throw the ball, I just throw it. Just, y'all keep it. I'm not dribbling around this dude. And on offense, he's just going at me. He's seen the fear, and he's just going and going, just talking and taunting. And, and I'm sitting here like, when that coach hit that sub, I ran off the court so <laughs> Like it was the best sub that you can ever have done. <laughs> Halftime comes, he said, "Man, you lucky I'm not an AI type of person. I would have gave your ass fifty in the first quarter." He had seventeen quick ones, <laughs> and I'm like, eh, "Yeah, yeah." But when I get older, I'm gonna. <laughs> <you>. <laughs> I swear to God, I'm gonna kill you, bro. <laughs> don't you say shit to me like year three. I swear to God, don't say that to be year three. Did you and get him? Did you get him then? And then every game after that, I just went at his throat. Just went at his throat. I just per per player, he probably got the worst of it. So that's okay. an example of you turning a negative experience into a positive. Positive. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Also, the the best trash talkers know when and where to do it too. Because as a referee, we're not going to hear and see everything. It's when you're boasting and you know, like when the whole game is watching you. There's plenty of times running up the court, you can go whisper something. We're not going to hear anything. Yeah, no, like uh, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Garnett was vocal in his trash talking. Mm. He's going, <laughs> he's going to say it loud. First of all, most of the time he was talking to himself. Like they can't stop you, KG. <laughs> you the ticket. You the ticket. They didn't come to see this bum. They didn't come to see this bum, right? <laughs> and that's how he. That's how he'd go at it, you know. So. You know, that was part of his game. The only person he couldn't trash talk was Tim Duncan. You know, Tim Duncan was... So, you know, so somebody like Kevin, Kevin, uh, Kevin Garnett, his, his part of his game was to try to get under someone like Tim Duncan's skin, you know? And that was his job. So, you know, like a ref, you... Hey, hey stop talking to Tim like that. Tech, like, Tim is like... And that that doesn't bother me. <laughs> let, let him do let him do what he's gonna do. It, it doesn't bother me. That's part of his game. He's been trying for years. Duncan <laughs> would never say a word back. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> he just let the he just let the buckets talk. He just let the buckets talk. Just killing him with the footwork. Yep, killing him with kindness. That's a real superpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know you had a, a chance to check out some of my recent mic'd up content, which I thank you for. Uh, one of the videos was of me warning a player for trash talking. Um, and that's where you said, I'm teaching exactly what the problem is. Could you go a little bit more detail on that? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, just like anything, right? You know, you have a, 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 an opponent, right? Usually if one player is trash talking, the other player is actually trash talking too. Just on simple things like, oh, yeah, I ripped you. You know, so when those two players have their little thing, so if the kid hit the shot on him, he's talking back. So they always say you always get penalized. The second person always gets penalized. No one ever sees the first actions, always the, the reaction. So, you know, you go up to him and say, hey, stop trash talking, right? Now his teammate is like, what do he do? And then you're <laughs> explaining it to the teammate. So it's like, like there, right there. Like it's not, it's not something that everybody's doing. So it's that's what I said. It's like one of those things. Like it's like it's the feel of the game. And I say sometimes, you know, we, you know, players too, coaches, refs, they go by exactly what the rules are, instead of the gray area. You know, sports is gray. You know, it's not like it's not girl basketball where you say, all right, we're gonna go down there. You're gonna turn off the five man. We're gonna throw it down. You're gonna dribble twice and then spin. Girls would do exactly what you just told them. No matter if the two dribbles and the layup is right there or the, it curled and the, it's wide open, they don't see none of that. They're seeing exactly what the... So with the rules, it's the same way that, yeah, there's rules, but then there's things that happen within the rules. Like you're like, okay, this, hey, not too much. You know what I mean? Like it's not, you know, okay, he's hanging on the rim. Okay. 
um, Wesley Rest books, you dunk on them, and then it's the end one. Let the man celebrate. I mean, come on. Let the man celebrate. It's Rudy Goldberg. So let the man celebrate on Rudy Goldberg a little bit. You know what I mean? Now, giving him a tech, like, I would be mad if I was Rudy. You gave me, a, you gave him a tech. Now, that is sports center. They're going to stop the clock. They're going to run it four or five times up there because there's so much time in between the tech now and the free throw. So now there's a tech that got to go happen. They're going to run that replay like four or five times, and then he has to shoot his and one. They're going to run that free throw. Like, no, just just let it go. Just let him shoot the free throw so we can get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? So <laughs> there's like little there's like little things, but I've said like like that's part of it. That's part of the emotion that, that I dunked on Rudy Goldberg. Let it fin let it finish. Like now, if he steps over Rudy and then Rudy does one of those, then it's like all right, tech. You know, but if there's no, if that's what I said, if it didn't cause a reaction, then there shouldn't be a, a technical call for it. Well, to your point, um, the gray area is what separates good officials from great great officials, and our ability to, to maneuver in the gray, you know, is like I said, is what separates us. And a large part of the game is black and white, but the majority of it is gray. So I would I would argue that. I didn't give a technical foul on the initial trash talk, and I went in that gray area to just use my voice and in a respectful way say, hey, you know, after you score, no need to trash talk. You know, let's keep playing ball. Because if we don't address those things and we're not proactive, then the game will get out of control. And then everybody who is yelling for us to let them play is going to be yelling, refs, you're letting the game get out of control. So it's the same person that's doing both. That, yeah, that, that <laughs> that's exactly that's exactly how it is. It's the same. Like we're we're arguing on both sides, you know. We're that person that's straddling on the fence, and we're just gonna argue here, and then we're gonna argue here. Like you know, as as a referee, you gotta remember. Technically, you're the most hated person on the court. Yes, you're, it's five against you, five against you. You're calling good calls here. They're happy at this moment. You start calling over here. We're mad at this moment, you know, so there's never been a scenario where a ref walks into the gym and, and everyone is like, here he comes. <laughs> We're about to have a great time. <laughs> like, no, it's like, oh, shit, this guy. You know what I mean? It's, that's, just, that's just how, that's that position. That's that position that you're the most hated person on the court. That's what they say when I walk in. Oh, shit, this dude again. Yeah, just do it again, you know, and it's, 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 it's one of those things where referees are judged mostly by how in the middle they are, hmm. you know, and that, and that's, that's how I judge, like how, how in the middle, like, are you, are you making an impact or, on the game or are you just managing the game? You know, it's like, are you a cop or, or are you a traffic cop? I mean, the traffic, you know, the guy who's like, come on, come on through, hold on. Or are you out there giving, I'm giving you a ticket, speeding, ticket, you looked at me, ticket. Like, that's how I judge, you know, referees. Like, if you can communicate with them, no matter what the problem is. Like, like when, when, you know, when you see this in the NBA, the worst things are being said. <laughs> Those, the worst things are coming out of a player's mouth. Like, the, the, the thing that, if they said it without this, tech, tech, probably will swing on that player. But this red here doesn't embarrass the ref. No one else get to see this red here. So you get to basically, this right here gives you freedom to say whatever you want. That's the green light right there? Huh? That, that's the green light? Just pull your shirt up? That's a, that's a good, pull, pull your shirt up because usually the NBA refs is like this. Don't embarrass me. I'm a human too. Don't embarrass, as long as you don't embarrass me. That's the, you know, the, the younger refs, you know, they're, they're, they're strictly by the book. Once you start getting to the, you know, five, 10 years in, then this right here is just like, you are a piece of Like, that's where that comes in there. <laughs> right, but the refs is like, as long as you're not embarrassing me, like you're not making me look like I'm, I'm fine with it. So that whenever you see a player do that, then you already know that. Ooh, mm. everything under the sun. Everything under the sun. <laughs> everything under the sun. Earmuffs, mom. Yeah, it's earmuffs. <laughs> it's really earmuffs. Like it's really. But you know, like 
at that level, you got to understand that it's still, it's still knowing who's who. Knowing the player, knowing the refs, knowing what refs let you get away with certain things, what left, you know, what, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. You don't know if the ref is going through something. You don't know if the player is going through something. You know what I mean? So that's why I said, you know, some things you just, it's a filler. You know, that's why I said, I, I always learned the ref's name. You know, so when I'm yelling and I'm going through my little moments, um, I can I can call them by their name. You know, it just it just sounds stupid as an NBA player to say, "Hey, ref," but he knows you. He knows exactly who you are. <laughs> they take the time to know your name, and you know you over there talking about, "Hey, ref," and you've been in the league four years. That's <laughs> that's a good strategy by you. It it does sound a little personal though if you're if you're yelling and shouting the name mm -hmm. after a, after you know or or as part of your complain mm -hmm. complaining. So. You know, calling a ref by his first name is a personable approach, but I I know when coaches are like, Paul, you missed that. It's like, all right, wait, hold on, coach. You don't need to shout my name in front of the whole gym. <laughs> yeah, but, but that's better than hey ref, like that, like hey ref, like come on, I've, I've done ref thirty of your games and you still can't get my name right. All right, all right, I'm. All right, I'm going to ignore you for a little bit. Listen, you can call me whatever you want. As, so, as long as you speak respectful, that's most important to me. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm, not, I'm not one of the people that get offended. You calling me ref? Well, I'm a, I'm a referee. referee. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, another video I had where you weren't too fond of me warning an assistant. Um, so what should I do the next time an assistant is screaming out onto the court? How should I handle that? You got to remember, he's an assistant. Correct. What's his job duties? A job dude is, Matt, listen, I never paid attention to an assistant. It, that he's an assistant for a reason. It's like you're like number two or three or four. Like your, your, your voice really don't even matter. You know what I mean? So that's how I approach it. Like I remember I come off and the, the assistant coach is trying to talk to me like, bro, what, what, what do you do? What do you like? Ba you, you're like the babysitter, bro. You're like, you're, you're sitting here, you babysit us. You, you know, it's, you know, you. You're telling us what we did wrong or what we did right. You're showing these plays that you do not, you can't put me back in the game. So I'm not listening to you. You know, that he's just the guy that manages, you know, egos on the bench, you know, um, tracking shots, tracking timeouts, fouls, and all that. His job is to yell at the ref. No, incorrect. His job is everything you mentioned before that. To on, okay, as a team on our, on our side, that's his job, you know, <laughs> from us. Make sure the ref is accountable. That's your, that's what's Make sure the ref is accountable for the things he's doing. I don't have time to look at that as a head coach, you know. You, 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 you focus on, on, on referees and, and all that. And, and that's where coaches and players need to know the rules because there's really only one voice from the bench. The head coach is responsible for the behavior of his entire bench. And we, as officials, um, we only speak to the head coach now, there's opportunities we could speak to the assistant. If the assistant comes up to us at the right time of the game, like following a timeout, then we can respectfully have a conversation if he's fact-finding about a play. Like, hey, what did my player do wrong? You had a block on that last play. Was he not in a legal guarding position? We can talk plays like that, but it's when they're questioning us or shouting onto the court, they have no leverage to do that. That's why you just saw me come with the loud, quick warning. That's a warning. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that was a technical foul because he was screaming wasn't even like a shout it was top of his lungs i was being nice there which i'm always nice i'm always nice but uh no assistants have no leverage with with shouting onto the court it's just not it's not acceptable um bench decorum what's so funny is it's there, there's nothing really acceptable when it comes to just bench stuff you know um like like me watching a game today and everybody's dancing on the sideline back in the day that would have been technicals that would have been just random technicals for no reason. I don't, I don't, I don't, that, that falls under taunting, taunting off the bench. I don't, I don't know what the hell that, that circus became. People got like, better at dancing. Yeah, that's what I said. They're sitting there dancing, doing all these. I'm, I'm surprised that those haven't been like thrown technicals because it's unnecessary, but it's unnecessary, but it's not affecting the game because it's, a, it's just a distraction on the sideline. But I'm very surprised that, like, teams wasn't getting, like, technicals for that or delay a game warnings 
or the celebrations on the sideline like that. That was that was a weird one that I'm like, eh, they let that go. Oh, OK, they got a whole choo choo train going on down there. <laughs> like <laughs> like but, you know, coaches, they allowed it too. I'm like, all right, coaching staff. That's what you allow your bench players to do. They not even ready to get in the game. OK. You remember uh, Monmouth from like five, six years ago? Yeah, their celebrations—they were hilarious. They became a movie. They actually became bigger than the game. And the NCAA addressed it the following year to kind of tone it down with excessive bench celebrations. Uh -huh. But that was funny. But that's what I said. No, but no ref gave them a tech for it, right? Wouldn't that fall on a taunting the other team? I mean, they're doing it indirectly. There, they're they're more or less just celebrating as teammates. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean. They, the NCAA made it a point of emphasis that year or, or um, clarified it, you know, that, that they have to tone it down. And I don't really think we've seen, saw much after that with Monmouth. I mean, it, it came to the, the NBA too, you know, you know, the NBA players started doing it. Was it Brooklyn Nets? When it was Brooklyn Nets, they started doing D'Angelo and them. They were dancing all through the sideline, shooting the arrows everywhere. I mean, that's, that, that's what I said. That, that's the game. Like I'm shooting an arrow at you because I hit a shot. Then you shoot it. You make it. You come down. Shoot an arrow. Like it's arrow shooting time. <laughs> <laughs> it's arrow shooting time. You know, you know. It's a game within a game. Let me uh, let me just read to you uh, something from the NBA manual about technical fouls. They're used as a tool to establish discipline on the floor and prevent conflict during a game. It's not to be used as a weapon but allows a referee to manage a game in order to prevent it from getting out of control. Successful NBA referees understand how to interact with the will to win on the floor that causes for competitive reactions and intensity. Thoughts on that? Now, when you've watched the game and you've watched some of those technicals lately, are they following that rule book? I don't know. The one you sent me the other night, um, we, we didn't hear anything of what happened. And it was just a short clip. So like like I said, it's tough to have context on what happened prior to that or what was even said. But even if he said whatever, did it look like that should have been a tech tech for that kid to get out? From me sitting on the couch, no. But the referee that was on the spot has a lot more information to go go on. But but then 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 that becomes personal because whatever happened is got to remember he got he probably didn't think he fouled, got called for it and probably just <laughs> that man and boom tech he's not necessarily talking to you he's talking to himself his own space you know what I mean like or who who's who the mark is the cousins so, yeah mark the mark and when he he gets frustrated because they called a travel on him and he's, he's walking away from the ref and he's, you know, he bounces the ball right there and cusses and they get him out of the game for it. Like those, those are personal because. Or you could say DeMarcus is taking it personal and not, and not. No, no, no. You got to remember, but something happened for him. There's nothing like, there's nothing that's happened to the ref for the ref to use his emotion. You got to remember, you're, you're telling the person that's going through the war right there to stay as calm as possible. That is not realistic. You know what I mean? You're telling them, keep your cool. Like, yo, you missed five. He's elbowing this shit out. He's doing all this little nicks and knacks and this and that. Of course, I'm going to have outbursts throughout this 48-minute, you know, game. Right, like I'm, I'm it, this just happens. Like, it, you know, we're not all having an amazing time on the court. If I'm, if I'm, <laughs> if I'm going for thirty, someone's getting a part of that thirty. Someone's getting yeah. cussed out on the sideline. Someone's embarrassed on the sideline. So, of course, he's going to be frustrated. Like, ref, come on, he keeps elbowing, he keeps slapping my hand. You know what I mean? Or not to me. Hey, ref, don't let him talk to you like that. Don't let him talk to you like that. You know, so I'm going to instigate the shit too, <laughs> right? Just so he can get a take. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's it's just one of those things where, you know, if it's not one of those, I call it the CP text, where when CP is, when he gets into his little, his mood and he's trying to cause, he's mm -hmm. trying to cause a foul and he doesn't get the foul. 
either he's going to get a turnover or offensive foul. The next thing he's going to do is he's going to foul so he can yell at the ref. At first, he was getting technicals for that. Now, we know the CP rule. We know that CP, <laughs> that CP frustration, right? He's getting, he's frustrated right now. He's going to foul so he can use that time to yell at the ref. As a ref, you didn't, why am I going to give him a tech? He's the one that's frustrated, not me. He's, he's, he's all out of it. He's, he, he's out of this. Not, so me giving him a tech, it just adds to more stress on me. That's what I said. Technicals don't actually, it don't actually calm the situation. Like, have you ever seen like two players, that, they're, yes, they're just yapping, yeah, 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 yeah. And then one gets kicked out of the game because that's the second one. And then it escalates from there. Because now I don't have to lose. The people just kick me out. So might as well just add to this fuel. And then that's where that, that whole stuff escalates. Because nobody wants to get kicked out of the game. One, one, you're messing up my stats, bro. <laughs> and you're messing up. <laughs> messing up my stats. Messing up my stats. That, that means you're messing up the contract. That means you're messing up the money. You know what I mean? So no, no player actually wants to get kicked out of the game. Like, you know what I mean? So, but, you know, just our natural reaction is our natural reaction. We can't control it. Like, it's just, it's just one of those things. Like, you, and then that's why I applaud people like Conley, who's never been teched in his life. Never. Like, <laughs> so, so it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Like, um, who else never been teched? Um, Frazier. Well, was it not, not Walt Frazier? Yeah, Walt Frazier. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, he's ne- never been tech. You know, Conley just, but Conley goes under that 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 thing where has any ref ever overturned his call? And you're like, no. He follows that mode, like whatever they call it, call. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, whatever they call it, call. Hey, there's no point. That's a pretty smart strategy. Yeah, he don't. You know, he don't trash talk. He's just he's just a mellow mind. He doesn't, you know, doesn't <laughs> like he just. Mm-hmm. What's so funny is Ron Artest, I, t- I talked to a ref about Ron. He's like, how many technicals have you given Ron? He was like, Ron, he said, Ron doesn't get his technicals for trash talking. Ron gets his technicals for, like, body slamming people. <laughs> like, you know, like, he, said, he, said, he said, Ron actually doesn't trash talk. That's, we don't worry about Ron, Ron trash talking to us because he doesn't, he doesn't say anything. Like he's he's nice. <laughs> he just hates you guys. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that actually makes sense. You know, so you have you have players that you know the refs are, the refs are you know, they don't affect their game. And then you have somebody like Rasheed Wallace where he hates refs. Hates them. Uh, he just hates refs. But you know, but that, you know, but there was games where they're like sometimes. That's what I said. Sometimes refs. Like, it's humans, human behavior. Like, you say something to them that they didn't like, they're going to hold that grudge the rest of, the, the rest of your, their career. Hmm. That's, that's just how it is. You know, that's just how it is. You know, um, AAU, you know, usually at that level, kids, they, it's the parents. You know, it's the parents and are, it's usually at that level, it's the parents and uh, the refs, I mean, uh, coaches. Um, college, I don't, I, don't, I don't really know, but in NBA, it's, you know, it's the players, you know, it's the players league. So, you know, those individual, you know, you, you can, you, you'll really start hating some of the players. Like, yo, yo, I hate you, bro. I really, I really hate you. <laughs> like, like, you know, and I, and I, I've seen refs like, like, I'm going to have me a good day today because, ooh. Ronnie hates you, bro. <laughs> Ronnie hates you. Hardest game in the world to manage, I, I imagine. How many uh, technical fouls you get in your career, and did you try to get any on purpose? Um, I got a few. I mean, I remember my second year when I was playing. Someone told me, Adele, you need to be serious. You know, all the smiling. You know, so I had this, like, inner anger in. So I was getting, my text was, you know, spazzing text, like, and ones, and, you know, just, you know, flexing on people and, like, like hard fouling. So I was getting flagrants and technicals from that. Um, like, 
when I started getting older, like my text became like, like I'm getting them on purpose. Like I, I'm getting them on purpose. Like, you, oh, you don't want to, you don't want to call fouls, right? All right, I got you. Hey, let if he drives, close line in them. I'm gonna close. I swear. And and then and then that <laughs> that that'd be that. Or if I or we're getting our ass whooped, I'm having a bad game and I'm trying to get out of the game. You know, I've done that before. Did you get the tech on site as soon as you said close line, or they waited for you to close line? They waited somewhere? for me to close line. <laughs> or try to close line. Right? <laughs> but then I don't want to hurt the players, so it's one of those things like, but um, like when I'm trying to get a tech, that, that's when they don't want to give me techs. Like when I'm trying, like now you're gonna give me a tech. I want out of this game. You're gonna get. I'm just gonna sit here and and then that's when the ref just like, yeah, no, you're gonna take this ass whooping like the rest of your team. Nope. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the easy way out. <laughs> you, if you want out of this game, you're gonna have to kick the ball in the stands, and I still might give you delay game warning. <laughs> You know, so you know you have, you know, that's what I said. Is but, but those are the those are the refs. You like, you 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 kind of like, be, become friends with, you know, um, you know. That's what I said. It's like emotions. You know, sometimes you know refs like, yo, talk to me when you're normal. I'm never when you're normal. I, I'm never I'm like, okay, if I hit three shots in a row, I'm on fire. Yeah, I'm back to normal. But you know, usually this is a basketball game. I'm never normal. <laughs> Right. So I, like so like towards like, you know, like 2005, six, you know, I'll just point at plays like, yo, just can you just look at that? Can you just look at that? Whoever's wrong owes dinner. All right. Whoever's wrong. OK, bet. And then that's how we that's how we, you know, I come after halftime and they're like, yo, you owe me a steak dinner. And then it, and then some of them like, yo, I owe you my fault. Cool. like, you know, that's you know, that's that's a, a bigger way to minimize things. Like with players, because, you know, players, we all feel that, oh, you're picking on me. So that's when you like, you know, if you're trying to really de-escalate, you know, a player from really, because you got to remember, it's it's never really about the other guy. It's usually about the ref. It's never about like, yeah, this guy's talking trash and, you know, I want to swing on him because the ref ain't calling the stuff. Like he's messing with me, ref's not seeing it, so I'm I'm going to fuck you up. You keep elbowing me like this, I'm going to do something to you. That's where that comes in at. So when the ref like, hey, hold on, I see him. Next time you do it, I'm going to catch him. And I'm like, all right, cool, cool. You know what I mean? That 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 stopped me from really spassing on this dude. Mm -hmm. and then that's when you say, hey, I, I see what you're doing. Hey, you, you, you keep it up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you out of this game. Now he's like, oh, shit, they caught me. You know what I mean? So there's easier ways, you know, like, because we think we're getting away with stuff we're getting away with when we're like you know so like if you say yo hey i, I see that let it go or after halftime hey i missed a few calls my fault cool all right cool okay okay right it, it, it takes that it takes the edge off because you know you you're acknowledging that you're human you're acknowledging that you're human because most of the times what ends up happening is it's like the double penalty like you missed a call I yell at you, you give me a tech. So you've penalized me two times for your one mistake. But you're not 100% we missed the call in the moment. Did you go back and look at the film and confirm it? No, no, it's usually like blood trickling down the arm. <laughs> the <laughs> eye, the scratches all down the arm, you know? Like, you know, so I'm yelling. And then, you know, like, okay, so you you seen the Brooklyn and the, Was uh, the, Brooklyn and the Washington game, right? What ends up happening is Bill, they're in the corner. Bill is trying to pass it to Kuzma. And the assistant coach stuck his hand out. Those players are yelling, like, yo, what the f That's Now, a, a beginner ref would have gave technicals for being yelled at. So now you penalize them for that pass that you didn't see, and then you gave technicals, which is another penalty which was your mistake. You know, it's it's one of those things where you say, hold, let me look at it. And then, like, I don't even know if they could have rewound that play, but just acknowledge that, hey, I might have I might have missed it. You know, I might have missed it in real time. My fault. You know, that that's my bad. You know, then that kind of takes away all that edge. But when you start trying to correct 
your mistake by just adding fuel, that's when it's like, yo, this is just so unfair. They have too much power. That's where that yeah, you know, mistakes are part of the game, 100%. And when, when we are self-aware to know that we actually did screw up in that moment, we're going to give the player or coach a little bit more leniency naturally. That's understandable. But we still have to uphold the respect for the game. And just because we made a mistake doesn't mean you get to F-bomb us, you know, the rest of the way in that moment. But but that's the rea- but that's the rea- just like when you get pulled over for a, a speeding ticket. You're not going to be like, oh, my God. Thank you for coming. I know I was speeding. Just give me the ticket. Like, what the fuck was I doing? What did I do? What did I do? You, you already have that aggression, right? So the same thing when when something's not going your way and it's slipping out of your control, you're gonna you're gonna you know you're gonna use that type of you know aggressive energy, you know. So the f bombs or whatever. It, that's just the net. That's what I said. That's just the natural part of it for certain coaches or players. You know, so you don't take those type of things personal. You know, those are not the ones that becomes the personal ones. Um, It's the, like, I remember a a female ref. um, She was uh, going at one of our players. I mean, like, I I, I say this, when a player's, when a referee is on your side, they're giving you the 50-50 calls. Like, that's how I know a player, like, a a ref is, like, one of those calls, like, he's kind of moving, but he's not, either it's going to be an and one or a charge, right? He's not really set, but if the ref don't like you, charge. If the ref kind of likes you, probably an and one or no call. So I gauge, like, how you feel about me on little stuff like this. I I got two fouls, and this third one is going to get me on a bench, and I reach, and you don't call it. Like, okay, all right, ooh, okay, let me. Let me stop before I really get a real foul. Um, so one of our players, uh, Karan Butler, getting no calls. Oh, no call, no call. And he's like, he's livid, like he's cussing. And I'm like, um, I'm talking to the, the 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 female ref, like, come on, what's going on? Like, what's going on? She was like, to be honest, Gil, I hate that kid. And I really hate him because I've been a referee for a long time. So that means I've heard everything under the sun, right? So I know which word is going to always come out first, the B word. That's just, that's throughout history, that's the first thing a frustrated player is going to say towards a female, that, that, the B word. Well, he said the C word. And that right there is you went out your way. <laughs> to find that word the b word that's a natural boom boom the the c word you thought about it and since we're going to go there you want to be personal i'm gonna be personal he said she said i'm not gonna mess up the game for him but those 50 50 subject calls ah, he's never going to be on the right side of that one you know moving off if it looks offensive or but offensive towards him like you know what I mean so like I understood that like hey bro why you use that word <laughs> like, like why you use that word he was like ah fuck her you know what I mean? <laughs> you know but that's but that ends up happening but like the, the the fact that she understood the behavior of men's basketball and understood okay like these words okay I get it like you know if if I if if I'm if I get emotional about the B word, the whole league is out. Everyone, the whole league is going to be getting technicals because they drop that like it's like I didn't foul. Not my my bad. They drop it like it's my bad. My bad. My bad. Like <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. I, I missed you. He said they they, they drop the they, they drop the B word and the F bomb like it's like it's just a normal word for them. So it's like some of those words I just pretend that I didn't even see and just keep it moving. The C word is an automatic ejection. I'm surprised Karan yeah. stayed in the game. Yeah, yeah, no, he probably got a tech that game, but this is like years later. She, she just, just got it. <laughs> she ca- she cataloged that. Yeah, she's like, man, that's that one's personal. So I'm gonna, gonna mm. he's gonna have to apologize. But knowing him, he's never gonna apologize. <laughs> it's funny. I had a coach chase me to the uh, to the locker room a few a few months ago yelling obscenities, cursing at us. Our locker room was locked, of course. 
um, couldn't get in, so I just had to take it. But I just stood there, professional, didn't say a word, you know. And I had this coach again on my schedule, and I wound up getting taken off the game. But I was, but I was saying, you know, I have the emotional capacity to go and work that game again, and I'm not taking anything personal. And that coach needs to do the exact same thing. So what I'm saying is I don't take anything personal, even if a player is rude or disrespectful or a coach is as well. You know, we can't let that carry over into the next game. I tell referees in the pregame, whatever happened prior does not dictate what's going to happen in this game. So we can't judge players or coaches, whether negative or positive, about previous games because it could be a totally different scenario in this game. So... Most ref, I know that was you know a, a rare occasion, but I think most refs don't take it personal and and don't think about those things. I think a lot of it is in the player's head. Fifty yeah, fifty call. No. Oh, I didn't get it. He must not like me. Yeah, no, no, no. It's it's a, it's 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 in the player's head, but there's you know there's some there's just some like there's just some that like you know like okay he don't like me like I I I I said some shit that I didn't supposed to say like. <laughs> I, I i i know he's not gonna like me this is gonna be a this one's gonna be a rough one for me like like I, you know it's one like it's one of those things where it's gonna be a rough one for me and you know you got to try to figure out how to to mend it you know but there's some players that like ah, you know there's two other refs there's, there's two other refs i could try to figure out but that one yeah but you know it's 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 one of those things when it comes to like coaching you know coaching there's a win or a loss you know, with referees, there's no win or no loss. Just, mm-hmm. We move on. So the, re- the 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 players and the coaches are going to hold on to it more because there's something. There's a win and a loss that that happens on that uh, on, on on certain things. Um, but like when I'm when I'm in AAU, like I don't like when I talk to the refs. It's like like I I I, I understand like. All right, let me wait till it dies down. I'm not gonna yell in real time, like yo, come on, number four is traveling like crazy. Like, you know, come on, just look at it. Like you know, like I've been there before. Where good approach, know, Gil. Good approach, coach. I'm, I'm the player, you know. I'm the player, so I, you know, the player's gonna yell in real time. But I gotta figure out and wait and see, like yo, was that even your call? Like, you didn't even run down the court. You just, you just, like, how did you see that reach? Back here, you don't even know if he hit the ball or not. It was a foul, but I'm just saying, how did you see it? Like, like, or did you prejudge it? Like, you was the right call. No, I'm, it was the right call, but you prejudged that call. But like, you you can't argue correct calls that you know are correct. It, it, you no, got to pick you different it. spots there. But that's what I say. You, I'm just arguing the position. Okay. Like, was that your position call? Like, I'm just you, you got it right, <laughs> but was that your position call? You know, you know, just to keep it like fair, like, like I'm telling you, that was the good call. But I'm just saying, was that your position? You know, just, you know, I don't want you to prejudge in calls because maybe it couldn't have been. But I'm letting you know it was. You know, so it's, it's, it gives them like, all right, okay, he gave me credit, <laughs> I, I got it right. So you know, you're just trying to figure out ways to just keep the the line of communication open. So I'm saying there, uh, hey, coach, I appreciate your feedback on that play, but I would never tell you which players should be shooting the ball. Please don't tell me which partners should be making the call. You like that one? Yeah, yeah, but I would, I would laugh. I would laugh, though, because, like, as, as an offensive player, the great offensive players, we study everything. We study where you're supposed to be. Like, we literally study where you're supposed to be. Like, all right, all right. So if I'm in a post, like, when we're, when we're training, okay, we, we'll look at film. I'll look at film and see the positions of where referees are, right? So I know what move I can do that's in your blind spot. Did you get that from Kobe? Mm, probably Chris Mullen. Okay. Yeah, it was Chris. It was Chris Mullen my second year. Uh, he was just teaching me, like he said, you know, he'd tell me like how to approach a game, what to look for. He said, like, he said he'll go into the arenas and then he'll dribble the whole arena to see where the dead spots are. 
because he want to make sure he knows where the dead spots are, where the hard spots are. So when he's playing in real time and he's getting ready to do a move, he don't want to hit a dead spot. But if he already knows it's there, he knows how to stay away from it. So I started picking up on little stuff like that. So when, when he said, come in and reaching in this, you got to know where refs are, what positions are, what you can get away with, knowing where they stand. And then from there, once I start getting wiser, you start watching Kobe, he's looking over his shoulder trying to see. And then you start realizing the elite are looking at everything, everything else. Mm. You know, so that's when I started working on moves, you know, working on slapping, you know, working on my slap the hand away, knowing that, you know, the ref is not going to call that. That's not one of his calls. Like that's, you know, you know, are they going to let me with this little extra travel? You know, my foot, is he looking at the feet right now? Or is he looking at the hands where I can, you know, shuffle back a little bit more to get behind this three point line because, you know, I'm in the middle of it, you know, so. We, you know, we start picking up on, you know, refs' behaviors. Mm. You know, the, the, the good ones do. Yeah. You know, you start, you, you know, you're trying to figure out, you're trying to, it's the manipulation. You know, you're trying to manipulate, you're trying to manipulate, you know, the, the great ones are trying to manipulate everything. Yeah, you're trying to take advantage as much as you can within the rules, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you think a lot of players go back and analyze film of the plays that they had in question that they thought were fouls or were not fouls and review it that way? Or once the game's over, they're just moving on to the next game? Rarely. R rare. It's rare uh, because most of the times the play is on a scoreboard. So we'll see it in real time there. Um, like it, de it, de it depends offensively let's say i took a charge or i got you know last second and i you know bumped him and got called for the charge i'll relook at that play just to see what i should have done what i could have done that i didn't see you know um like okay like damn his feet were there um could i have sidestepped uh this guy's running down my back uh, ref, look, there's a ref there, ref there. There's nothing I could have done. You know what I mean? I, like, I couldn't have got out of that, you know? Or sometimes I was like, ah, oh, I should have moved. The ref is on his side. So his, you know, he's looking at the guy's back so he don't see this right arm. And I, if I pull out of it, and that's where, that's where, that's where, you remember like back in like the early 2000s, 90s, like Marbury and them, when they drive, they'll cuff it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, that cuff got, it got me in trouble. Because once a player gets a hold of it, the ref can't see if it's ball or foul, right? So that's when I started coming and started putting the arm up. So now if I'm driving and then I throw the ball and they reach and I pull the arm up, it, there's three views, there's six eyes right here. And then that's where you get that foul or you do the, ow! And then, you know, sometimes you might catch your ref like, oh, shit, foul. <laughs> You know, <laughs> because you got to remember, a, a ref is watching the game also. So, you know, he's watching a game to, like, he's not necessarily like micromanaged looking at everybody who's foul. Like, he's watching the flow of the game. So he sometimes get caught. He gets sometimes get caught just watching the game. You know, so sometimes you got to, hey, hey, and then, like, oh, ah, foul, got him, got him. <laughs> and that's where you hear a lot of that coming from. It's funny. I take an opposite approach. When I hear those loud sound effects from players, that actually tells me it's not a foul because they're trying oh, to serious? they're trying to sell me. They're trying to sell me. Yeah, trying to. You got to. That's what I say, you, you, you have to. That's what I said. You know, because there's only so much you can see. Right? There's only so much you can see. And, you know, um, especially an offensive player. I say, you know, it's harder with offensive players, uh, especially on the next level because we work on everything. We're, we're, we spend summer and summer, all summer, learning new moves, learning plays, learning the rule book, trying to manipulate the rule book. So when, you know, like, like the NBA, when they start handicapping, like, why are you handicapping for the defense? They're lazy. You think they work on defense in the summer? You think they're working on boxing now and slides and closing now? To, uh, no, they're not doing nothing. They're working on their offense, and they're never going to shoot. Rudy Goldberg is working on half-hook shots and 
drop steps that he's never going to do in a game. Never going to, he's never going to attempt that. He's not working on no defense and we're spending our hours and hours and hours learning these rules to try to manipulate them for ourselves for you guys to try to help them out by, you know, like, why are you helping him? If I got him to pump fake and jump, he's not disciplined. If I throw the ball out there and he reaches and I, and I, and I clothesline his arm and I catch it, that's his problem. Don't reward him because he's not disciplined enough. Obviously, I'm disciplined enough to catch a, a whole, you know, reach. Like, that, that takes hours in practice of I can do a move and he reaches and I catch it. That takes hours. So why are you penalizing me for, like, doing my homework into this, this sport? Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's unfair sometimes. I know you mentioned about um... – humanizing, uh, you know, talking to refs like they're humans. And that's one of the things Crown Refs is trying to do is humanize officials because, you know, we do take a lot of abuse on all all levels. And 70% of new officials quit after three years due to abuse from coaches and parents. So it's actually a point now where games are getting canceled due to this, you know. And, and for most, it's a part-time job, you know. But um, I'm trying to kind of reinvigorate the industry and try to inspire people to love it and, and want to be great and, and want to improve their skill set. So that's some of the things we're doing at, um, here at Crown Ref. So I appreciate you being a part of it. Just want to switch things up for a minute. You averaged uh, almost 30 points in 2006. How much would Agent Zero in his prime average in 2022? Um, with the rules, the way they are, no big man in the lane. It's an open lane. Easily 35, 36. Damn. Damn. Easy, easy. Because, you know, I'm averaging 30 with a Shaquille and big man down there that I'm dodging and weaving through. True. Um, so the fact that, you know, I was a quick scorer. Like, you know, if you look at the James Harden's Kyrie's, they, they had that more bop to their game. Mm -hmm. They're going to sit there and sit there and try to shake you. Me, I, you know, back then we were one-liners. We're just trying to, we're just trying to figure out the quickest way to get to that rim. Like, I'm not going to be sitting here doing step back threes, you know, double, double step backs. And I was at 15 feet and I'm at 27 feet. No, that's not, that's not what I'm going to be doing. You know, I'm trying to find the, 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 the quickest path to score. So, you know, like if you look at it now, there's more threes in today's game but from when I played, the average team point is two points. It was only went up two points, <laughs> like all across the board. Like you shoot, you shoot net many threes, and you only have a two point difference from back then. And then if you look at the eighties, the eighties was averaging every team one hundred eight to one hundred twelve. That's how far off. Like this game right now is one hundred four to one hundred six, one hundred four to one hundred eight. So the, the 80s games was faster than today's game. Yeah, I remember some of those eight, early 80s clips of like the Nuggets scoring buck 70 or whatever they scored <laughs> and with, with no shooting really either. Yeah. Because it's, it's all the getting to the basket, getting free throw. Like it's, it's fast. It's like, you know, today's game is more highlights. It's more, it's more of a highlight reel than anything. It's more sports center type of basketball where – Everything has to be spectacular. You know, everybody wants to do something spectacular. Nobody wants to just, like, you, you know, you have Tatum, you have Booker, um, that just, I'm just going to get, I'm just going to get buckets. Like, you know, if I, if I give you a highlight, I give you a highlight, but other than that, I'm, I'm trying to get 50. I'm trying to get a quick, like, lay up, lay up, lay up. Okay, step back, but I'm not sitting here trying to, you know, bop you, make you fall, let the crowd go ooh and ah, you know, every single play. Who were your favorite refs when you played? Um, favorite? I, you know, I actually liked them all. Uh, Good answer. Um, Crawford. Crawford. Joey, like Crawford. Joey or Danny? Jo Joey. Okay. I didn't like Joey if we was playing against Iverson. That, that was... Other than that, Joey was just... He was a wall. Like, he's just... 
He didn't, he didn't like nobody. So it didn't really, you know, so he wasn't going to play favoritism. He didn't like no one. So it wasn't like, there's really no, you know what I mean? So you don't have to worry about him like, like, oh, he's, he's against me. He hates all 10, 20 of you guys right now. So, you know, so there's no, there's no benefit. So with him, he becomes the neutral ref, you know, Steve, Jack, same with Steve, but you know, with Joey, because his nephew loved Iverson, <laughs> and he will come to the game. Ivers is giving you 50 55 every time. Like, ah, ah, ah. like those are the two combinations you just didn't like. I just don't want to guard Iverson if Joey Crawford's on the court. How'd you know about his nephew? Huh? How'd you know that his nephew was a big fan of Iverson? We got, that was the that was the rumor. Okay. You know, so it's like so when you seen the two, like, oh no. <laughs> I gotta guard Iverson today. Joey's here. This is uh, oh that's I'm not sleeping tonight. This is going to be a rough one. Shout out to Joey Crawford. He uh, he was on the podcast a few years back and was very introspective on how much growth he had as an official. I know, you know, there was there was a lot of, um, I guess, emotional growth from him with, you know, the Tim Duncan incident. And, you know, he got some some help on that and, you know, was able to grow after that. Almost went to 30 straight NBA finals. Well, you know, that that's kind of weird, though, that uh, a quiet guy would irritate Joey. Hmm. You know, that, 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 that just, you know, I, I don't know what he said about him, but that just seemed like, like Tim Duncan. Like, yeah. Oh, all right. Like, you know what I mean? It's one of those, like, not a Rasheed Wallace, not the, the one who does not communicate. <laughs> you know, who doesn't communicate got to you, Joey. All right. Okay. I guess, you know, probably Joey just the aggression made him feel straight. Mm. You know, like, you know, it's like I'm coming in for a purpose. I don't like none of you guys. Okay, yeah. Let's just keep straight. I don't I don't want a relationship with you guys. And and that seemed like how he he rapped. Well he was then, he was very transparent about it and took a lot of accountability. And he would have been to thirty straight NBA finals had it not been for two thousand and seven when he got suspended for it. Oh wow. Crazy, right? But, you know, but, you know, as much as players, you know, we will say, no, nah, we, I don't want to, I don't want Joey as a, but you do in a sense, because, you know, with Joey, he does not take favoritism, right? He's going to be straight down the line. You know, if, if he don't call a reach on him, he's not going to call the reach on you. You know what I mean? It's not one of those. Oh, you, you, hey, call it on on a call. Us, call the same thing on the other side. He's the one that's gonna call it on the same. He's gonna make the same call on both sides of the field. So you know, um, I like the uh, was it Jack uh, referee? He retired. Uh, the one uh, he raced uh, Charles Barkley. Oh, Dick Bavetta. Dick, Dick, yeah. Cause Dick was like, you know, if you if you hear me blow the whistle, throw it up at the rim, <laughs> throw it up at the rim. I like and he said I like and ones. You know what I mean? So you know, like that's and that's what you start realizing with refs. Like what refs are gonna let you bump, gonna be more defensive minded, right? Meaning they they like the '80s style still. You know, some refs, you know, like they like you gotta remember every ref is different. Every rep, and then that's what that's what I said. Humans, we you have to you have to say, listen, they are humans, so they have a way they see the game. They have a way they're going to ref the game, no matter what the rules are. It's different in here. So you know, some might like eighty style, some might like fast pace, some like you know they don't like like you know like Dick and one. He love and ones. He love high scoring. Don't like blowout. Don't like blowout. He thinks blowouts is bad for the game. Makes one one team soft. One team is playing. You know the crowd is out of it. You know I like the games to be. You know I I, I like games where you know the, the best athletes in the world are competing at a high level. You know so you know if you're up twenty at the halftime, eh. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know I can't say what I'm going to do, but I can tell you I'm leaning towards the other team. Like, okay, it's noted. 
you know what I mean? It's it's noted. So you know, you just try to figure out, and I and I think that's what you know smarter players do understand that. You know, you try to figure out what that referee style is. You know, and once you once you realize what the ref style is, then some of that frustration actually gets minimized too. But that but that's that's only a small few of players. I mean, you're, you're talking less than 10 players in the NBA are approaching, you know, the game to the point where I need to know, like, what type of calls he calls, what type of, you know, plays he like, you know, is he prone to, you know, you know, is he, does he like continuations? Does he stop the play right there? Like, all that actually... Because you got to remember, if I get fouled and I'm going with the continuation and you're waving it off, now that just frustrated me, right? Like, no, that's the end one. I didn't pick up the ball no more. Like, now I'm yelling at you. But I already know he don't do end ones. Once it, once you call it and I look, there's no – but that, that's why I said it's more studying for that player, though. So. Yeah, you mentioned maybe the top ten players that have amassed so many different skills – in, mm-hmm. Now that that now they can focus on something like the officiating and and referees tendencies, mm-hmm. but yeah. most players coming up, it's not even on their radar. Yeah, like I remember I asked, um, can't think of his name. It wasn't Tony. No, 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 Benny. And I forgot his name, but you know, I asked him. I said, um, I'll ask this question. I said, who was harder to guard? I mean, who was harder to ref, Shaquille or Dwight? Right. And he said, ooh, Dwight's harder to the ref. I said, serious? And this is what he said. He said, Shaquille had more skill. He said, because Shaq was skilled, he didn't try to use brute strength. The white tries to bully and use brute strength. So now refing him is trying to figure out, is he the one causing a foul or they're fouling him? You know, so now when we're going to the game, now we're trying to figure out who's causing this contact. So he becomes harder to ref because he's going to cause the contact. So we're trying to figure out, like, you know, so he's going to get fouled the most, but he's going to be penalized the most because we're not going to call a lot of stuff because he's initiating all that contact. And I'm like, okay. Let me ask you this. Um, how did the Tim Donahue scandal affect the player referee relationship? <laughs> All the players did say, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. But but a smart player understands what he was doing. Right? Um, you know, if he's if he's taking the overs then it don't affect me. Actually, it actually helps me. Um, it helped the it helped the star player because the star player he needs that star player to run the score up. You know, so if the if the over under is you know uh, let's say two twenty, right? There's going to be a lot of and ones called. There's going to be a lot of you know I'm shooting and the player does this. There's going to be a lot of those called. You know, because we need to get over 220. <laughs> you know, so as a scorer, I don't, I don't really, you know, look at him as a bad guy. You know, I'm just trying to figure out who else is doing him over and under, so I can, you know. <laughs> well, gambling, gambling aside, do you think it had a negative effect on the next few years after that? <sighs> probably from. Probably from the fans and the, the outside world, yes. But you know, if you really understand basketball, it's hard. It's hard for a. Re- it's easy for a ref to control a game, but it's it's kind of hard too, because yeah, you can control a game with fouls, calling fouls or not calling fouls. Like so, I can look at a game and be like, oh, the fix is probably in. Like I can, I can really look at a game, and you can see it. You can, you can see like, oh, they're actually trying to get this game to go like to a game seven or to a game four. Like you can, you can see how it's being refed. Um, what you can't control is talent of a player. So you know, like, let's say you're trying to fix a Golden State game, 
right? You're trying to keep it within this, like, you know, like what they were doing with college, like the spread is seven, you know, I'm taking under. So keep it in this window. Well, you can't do that with a Clay Thompson or Curry on the court where they come down and, you know, shoot 35 footers back to back to back. You can't control what they do. So, you know, being a rep trying to go on an over under, I mean, not over under, but a spread on certain players and certain teams will be disastrous for you. You know, so, but as a, so knowing that as a player, you're not really affected by the Donahue thing. Um, you know, there are certain players where, you know, like Chris Paul and um, uh, Donahue's buddy. Uh, <laughs> Chris Paul and oh Scott, my man Scott Foster. Foster, that's my man. Yeah, so you know, like that's a relationship that Foster can never win. He's gonna always, he's gonna go to everything he does that has to do with Chris Paul is gonna be questioned until one of them retire. You know, um, and it's just even if it's not true. The fact that we are now looking, and as long as Chris Paul keeps losing when you're roughing, it's true. You know, <laughs> so it's one of those things that it's one of those things where there's nothing he can do about it. We don't care. We don't care if you call every foul for Chris Paul and he has 78 points. If he loses the game, your fault. You know, so it, it's just, it's one of those things as, like, I remember, like, I thought the only time I questioned the NBA's ethics was at game six when they put Foster in game six. I I thought that was a big, big no no. And and I because you know, you know, gambling, you know, gambling's here too. So what ends up happening is when Foster got announced that he was doing game six, it all shifted. You know, everyone was betting the Suns. All of a sudden, it just flip flopped. Everybody, everybody and their mama threw their money on the Bucks. Sure. The, the, but there was no question. There was no question because when it came to real life, you had to think about the element of thought. Foster's game six. What do you think that did to Chris Paul and the Suns? You mentally. You mentally scarred them. Like you mentally took them out of the game with that decision. And that that shouldn't have been allowed. Like you cannot, like you really gave one team an advantage. Just a mental advantage. It was a mental advantage. Cause now Chris Paul is gonna sit there like ah, ah, ah. like you know, the whole team is like, damn, Fosters, we we lose every time. Like you can't, you should that shouldn't have been allowed, you know you know, in that big of a game. It's just one of those things that, that shouldn't have been allowed. And I just thought it was just a bad look, you know, just just as an NBA, you know, you just gave one side too much of an advantage mentally. I can, I can hear that as a player's perspective, but ultimately the NBA has to put their best officials on the court. Scott Foster's been to, I don't know how many consecutive NBA finals. He's ranked as one of the top officials in the NBA. So he, I know he's approaching it just like it's any other game and it's, the responsibility of the players and coaches to have to do the same and not get, you know, taken back so much by who's ref in the game. Yeah, that, that's just like a, that's just like a, a ex-girlfriend, you know, um, <laughs> having to, having a decision on, you know, you going to jail or not. <laughs> as soon as she walk in the room, you're like, oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done for. So now you're sitting here, she's the judge and you just sit, no matter what you say, <laughs> You already know the outcome, and that's what happened. You're like sitting there, like, "Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to jail. I'm going to jail. He is going to. She's getting me back, you know." And that was just that look. And I just thought that was the only time. That's really the only time I've ever questioned like the NBA itself. I just like, ah, that's, that's not a good. That's not a good look. But I'm gonna put all my money on the, the Bucks, though. But that's just like you know, I wanted Chris Paul to win. You know, um, I'm, you know, I, I, 
you know, I'm betting, I'm, you know, figuring out how I'm going to bet, you know, and in game five, I had my money on the Suns. And as soon as they said Scott Foster, I canceled my bet, put all my money on the Bucks. <laughs> I'm going with the, I'm going with the advantage, you know, I'm going with the most of the emotional advantage. I, I knew that was a scar. I just. <laughs> Talk to, uh, we have an audience of referees listening. Hopefully there's a few players checking in on this episode. Talk to me about No Chill Productions and the No Chill Podcast. What do you have going on? You know, right now, you know, when I, when I started it, you know, um, just like any podcast, you know, you're just trying to, you know, give back information, give back stories, um, you know, trying to help the next generation, next, you know, like the, of the mindset. So, you know, like when we're talking with other players, it's communication, right? We're, we're, we're communicating, we're, you know, we're reliving, we're trying to help the next generation. Like, because you've watched so much basketball growing up, you still don't know who that player is. You don't know nothing about them. The interviews you see are like, it's, it's not personal. It's not a conversation. You're just asking questions, the same questions, you know, uh, you know, you, what happened at the end of the game? Uh, we lost. Like, you know, it becomes this <laughs> this thing with the media and the refs. So, you know, now that players get to boom, you know, like, come on, Draymond, let's talk about it. Come on, Katie, let's talk about it. Like, and now these guys get to open up. So you get to really see the real personality of the players. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, players' podcast is becoming bigger. And big things like now you have a referee podcast, so you get to really like communicate and talk and understand and and just get better because at the end of the day, information is what people want. You know, like no no matter no matter what it is, you know, like you know, like the referees that's you know here they they get to understand what a player's thinking, how a player's thinking, you know, and that right there, even if you change, you know, three three referees mindsets on how okay how to go into the game that helps the game (laughs) that right there helps the game just three two one it that's that's two to three that that will you know go to the next level um and just like you know referees and 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 coaches and players every level is totally different every level is totally different you know like Refereeing, like I tell, I tell referees, like, you know, you know, what level are you trying to get to? You know, are you AAU, high school AAU, um, college, trying to get to the pros? Um, and then I say, well, just like a player, just like a player. And I tell players this, the rules in AAU is different than the rules in high school. There's no shot clock. There's a shot clock. Right. Um, college, different. NBA, totally different. Totally. You know what I mean? So your game has to evolve through these. Like, so if you're an NBA player, you had to find some way to get through the high school level, the college rules, so you can explode in these rules and that's why a player like a Zach Levine can go to college average seven points and then be an all-star in the NBA because his skill level was set for that stage and same thing with a ref like you can see a ref their skill level is probably frowned upon at this level but it's for that level and he has to try to figure out how to get to that level, you know, because he's getting penalized here. <laughs> like he's, his, his brain moves at a different speed is at this level, you know? And, but you know, there's some, like, you can see it. Like I'd be like, all right, he's more of an NBA ref than, you know, high school, you know, the, the things, the, 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 the moves he's making, the plays he's making, like the calls he's making, like he's, you know, he's, there's continuations, you know, it's like there's little, there's little, you know, things that, okay, he watches a lot of NBA, but that's going to hurt him on, on this level. So it's just, it's just one of those things, just taking in information, talking to other refs, talking to all refs, like the bad ones, the media ones, the good ones, you know, you just can't talk to, you know, the, the refs that's been to the finals 30 times. You got to been, you got to talk to the ones that haven't been there. They've been in league 12 years and haven't been there. 
You need to know why. So you need to pick his brain. What is he doing mm -hmm. that's keeping him from going to that next level? So, you know, like I, I tell, like on the basketball side, I was like, there's no such thing as a bad player. You're all NBA players. You have something I don't have. I need to see it. Like what got you? You have something special. I want to see it. As a, that's either a step back, a hezzy, a cross, a jab. Like I want to see what makes you special so I can add it to me. So I look at all players. You know, I look at all players and I try to, I try to take something from everyone. It's like a computer. I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, like update my computer software as much as possible. Well said. I can't thank you enough for your time and wanting to collaborate here and, and talk about the, you know, just a little bit about into a player's mind and, and with regards to officiating, uh, why'd you want to do it? Why'd you get, how'd you get back to me so quickly? And, you know, just take me through that. You know, like, I, like, that's what I said, just with, just with, when it comes to basketball, I'm just, I love it so, I love it so much, right? So, you know, like, you know, I look at podcasts, I follow like, uh, like rankings and, you know, other, you know, other basketball podcasts, um, you know, ground root stuff, you know, because, you know, just looking at the information, because you got to remember when you're at the, when you're at the NBA level, you're missing, you're missing, like, NBA, the bottom levels think that the NBA is teaching them when it's the other way around. Mm. We learn from the youth. If you're, not, if you're not following youth basketball, when that player comes into the NBA, he's going he's gonna to get the best of you. Mm. Because what they're, what, what's, so what happens is a young kid will see, let's see, a John Morant do a move. Like that last move he did where, you know, he went behind the back, stopped, and then did the, like he was about to go up, and then. Yeah. A kid is going to do that. He, John Morant did it naturally. This kid is going to practice this move a thousand times. Then he's going to add all kind of extra shit to it. Mm -hmm. Right? Something John Morant hasn't seen. So what ends up happening, these kids are taking these moves and adding their own little spill to it. By the time it gets to us, we don't know what this is. This kid done hit us with so many, so much different stuff. And now we're, we're behind. That's why if you look at LeBron, he still can't do a Euro step correctly. He's still like, he goes that right, left travel every single time. It's just because he never, <laughs> he never put it part of his package. You know, he, the same package he came with, because when we get there, we we're, 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 we're focusing. Our offense is being ran by the offense we have. So we're doing our moves and we're creating our scoring patterns within our offense. You know, so, you know, if you're not in AAU, that's why I like somebody like Chris Paul, he has an AAU team. So he gets to watch his kids every summer. In in oh I need I need to take from that I need to take from that I need to same thing with refereeing you need to see what what calls are being made what rules are being made you know because you're gonna because there's no real summer basketball for the NBA you know but for AAU it is mm -hmm. so now you get to see what rules are trying to be implicated what rules are changing what's going on so you guys are technically moving a little bit faster than everybody else. So, you know, so it's really studying down. And that's the beautiful thing about the evolution of sports. It's like Jordan and Magic acted as like a platform for LeBron to elevate his game. Mm -hmm. Same thing with what you said about Ja Morant. They're just building on top of it and it's evolving into something totally different mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. higher skill level. And it's exciting to kind of forecast where NBA and, and sports is going. Is there anything else you want to say in closing to the dedicated audience of basketball officials that are listening? You know what? On rules, this is one thing that, um, that I think refs should start implicating. When you're, when you're making rules and rule changes, you need to really get the extreme minds to do the moves. The reason is when you come up with, all right, so we have the gather step, right? 
they're taking a gather step from a player who has like the basic version of it. So they're showing us the Clay Thompson gather step, the, the, the Curry gather step, and you're not, they're not like the, so when you're, when the video is coming and you're watching, okay, that's the gather step. Okay. Okay. Got it. And then some freak athlete comes in with the same gather step, but it looks nowhere near <laughs> what your brain said that gather step is. That kid is getting penalized. He's going to get penalized until you catch up to it. Hmm. So, you know, sometimes when moves are being created, you need to like, like see the extreme that the, like that, that kid who's going to push it all the way to the line, because that's, that's what the high level kids are doing. They're taking the basic Euro step or the basic, you know, um, two foot, uh, this, this, uh, the zero step, they're taking all these little things and they're testing their ability against it. And if you haven't seen that ability do that, then those kids get penalized until everyone catches up. So it's one of those things where you have to, like when that video comes out, you should have the extreme athletes test those. You know, because they know like, like the Euro step with Ginobili, that don't look like the Euro step now. You're like, oh, yeah, that was that was an awkward two moves. <laughs> I mean, the awkward two steps. But you know, th but those minds start tweaking those steps, and you know, it's 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 one of those things where it's like you see the basic, and then you got to test it on other subjects to see if they can manipulate it a little bit more so you get a real range of how that actual move will look in real time. Because you got to remember, it's all real time. It's not like you can say, oh, hold on, freeze, let me, one, two, okay, good move, mm -hmm. go. Like, yeah, <laughs> your brain is moving in real time and you're like, no, that's a travel. And then you're like, was that a travel? Oh, I don't know, <laughs> like, you know, and that's, and that's how it is. Because there's sometimes I'm looking like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, and oh, another, another thing NBA has that I think the lower level should start like understanding too is advantages. If there is no advantage, don't stop the play, right? So I know you see a lot of times where there'd be a fast break, right? And the guy takes like 12 steps, right? And the there's no call. And I remember I used to complain about that. Yo, what, come on. And the ref's like, listen, why am I going to stop that play when you didn't even hustle back on defense? Why am I going to reward you and you didn't even hustle back? So because you lost the ball, you didn't hustle back on defense, I'm supposed to say, oh, brr, travel, your ball again. No, no, I'm not doing that. I am not, I am not rewarding you for not hustling it back. So if he took 20 steps, I didn't see it. I'm going to let him finish the play. You take the ball out. If you want me to call a foul, then you go create that travel. You hustle back down. And if he takes that when you're trying to hawk him down or something, then I'll blow it. Or like when Russell Westbrook, like, you know, gets the inbound play and he starts walking, doing all this, the referee is not going to blow that whistle. Like you, you have to really just be sitting there doing that, but he's not going to work because it wasn't calls. Like I'm going to, you guys are setting defense, chilling back there. I'm not going to blow the whistle and stop this play or that, or that play where the kid gets the inbound and then he steps in first on accident and then go, and then the ref like blows it, do this. The defense is all the way back there. Just, just take the ball out and, like, no one's going to complain. No one's going to – the, the coach is not going to – hey, look, no, it was over and out. Like, come on. Your team is back there in the zone. Let, let, it, let, it, let, it, let, it, let it go. I'm not going to reward you guys for sitting in the zone. And he just had a mental just, – just, hey, step back out. Okay, take the ball out. Let's, let's keep this game going. So those are some things that – because I, I seen it yesterday. I seen that one yesterday. And – it helped my son's team. And I'm like, Rev, eh, you know, I said, they, they're back there. They're not even playing defense. Don't, 
there's no point of making that that, that call right. That's, mm-hmm. that's just a, you know, they, they they didn't do nothing. They didn't earn that. <laughs> they didn't they didn't earn they didn't earn that one. You know, so it's just it's like little things like that where, you know, like referees at the next level, they it's a great it's that, that I, I call it the if there's no advantage like. Marcus Smart is amazing at taking advantage of that, where he had like push on James Harden a couple of times and James Harden uh, do that. I see who's causing it. But when James Harden does that and Marcus Smart falls, as a ref, oh shit, James Harden has an advantage because one player's down. I have to call the offensive foul now. Like I know James is being fouled two times and it's but because Marcus was smart enough to fall to create that disadvantage he gets rewarded for it because now I'm I I can't allow this four on five is that that's an advantage so I gotta come on you knew what he was doing James that I, I can't I can't reward you for that you know you knew he was baiting you and you fell for the bait mm-hmm. yeah man. Uh, advantage thing. It's just an advantage. Thing. Just watch out for it. If there's if there's no advantage, like no one gained an advantage, you know, then you know, just let the play keep going. Hundred percent advantage disadvantage is still um, a deciding factor where we differentiate between incidental versus illegal contact. So it's very helpful to kind of think along those lines. This was fun, man. I can't thank you enough for coming on. I hope you enjoyed it. Oh yeah, I used to do this thing like. Um, like if I get the ball and everyone's down there, I'll like double dribble on purpose, like just to be funny. <laughs> like, and the rest like, come on, stop playing. <laughs> like, it's just no chance. <laughs> like it's one of those things. Like so, it's you know, I had fun. I had fun. Thanks for coming on, man. Can't thank you enough. Appreciate it. Right. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Crown Refs podcast. Serve the game.